I can't, I can't believe it was 12 years ago that Albert Brooks made his first appearance on this show, mm. and every time he came on the show, uh, he surprises you. He's a very inventive comedian, and uh, his outlook uh, on life is bizarre, mm -hmm. as it is for most people who deal in <laughs> <Ill> comedy. <laughs> Why did I do that? Hmm? I you see what I'm talking about? Yes, just yeah. my mind just, just snapped right there. <laughs> would, you, would you welcome <laughs> Albert Brooks? Albert Brooks. <laughs> They raised the seat. Oh, I'm sorry. Or, the, or one of the two, or they lowered my... If I would have known that you had this accoutrement on you, I would have said the distinguished... What accoutrement? Albert Brooks. The beard. Al <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Did you, uh... I tried to do that once when I was, uh, one of those when I was in the service, because I wanted to look older, and it came out looking... No. If uh, they didn't let Presley do it, they wouldn't let you do it. That's right. Did you, but uh... I, I did it for, uh, I did it, a, uh, I'm, I'm in uh, this movie with uh, Dudley Moore called Unfaithfully Yours. No, wait, I'm, I'm going to a movie with Dudley Moore. Oh, I'm in a movie with Dudley Moore. I grew, I grew it uh, for this part. Yeah. And uh, I was a little wary because, you know, I, I'd like to say it on television. Martin Scorsese promised me the role in Raging Bull. I arrived on the set. I was 490 pounds and ready to act. <laughs> this is true, Johnny. He takes me aside. You know, he pulls me aside. He says, you know, it's not going to work out. I mean, I'm, I'm almost 500, oh, really. I'm just about like 492 yeah. when I came in. <laughs> Here's De Niro starting to eat in the background. Yeah, sure. Oh, but I grew this, and they used it in the film. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of a part? Are you romantic? Uh, yes, I play his love interest. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it film I play, it'd be perfectly I play his bank interest. Perfectly actually. acceptable. It's a, a terrible role. It's all numbers. Um, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm his. Uh, <laughs> I drove by a bank today, and I just thought of that uh, Mick Jagger song. You know, went into the instant teller. I just keep thinking you should redo it because they're instant tellers, not oh, that's fortune true. tellers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Johnny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Your I mind was just clicking around. Yeah, there, isn't it? yeah, yeah. It's just about to engage. I, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't worry about that out there. You know, yeah, the of women so. have just sung and they're being congratulated, and uh, I have to be quiet. So, um, I play his manager. Oh, he's I see. he's uh, uh, a conductor, and mm. I'm uh, uh, not on a train because generally those guys don't need a manager. They do, <laughs> they, they do need an agent. You know, of course. We'll get you a better train. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> were you, I, I were you dropped when you were very young, Albert? I, mean, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, was, I was dropped uh, a year ago. Uh, you know? <laughs> but uh, thank, thank God for it. Yeah. I went to a place that drops you uh, on purpose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you pay. It's a comedy place. Well, this leads me into why I, I've... I, you know, I can't get over. The carpet is so beautiful. Isn't it John. nice, Jess? We yeah. try to... <laughs> You know, I, we I, want our guests to feel it's kind of a homey atmosphere. I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. I, I took some rubbies about an hour ago, and it's just, <laughs> it's, it's just come on. And I, I'm just, oh, there's Hawaii. And... <laughs> yeah, I saw, um, I saw you in a, in a motion picture that played on, um, what, on cable a couple of nights ago. Yeah, no, you know what my bumper sticker says? No. Thank, thank God for cable. Yeah? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, they give you a week in the suburbs and then they're gone. I mean, you the know. The picture is over. No. I've had fans seeing the last reel as it's putting back in the truck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up while you're walking, you know. <laughs> Disappear yeah. that quickly. Yeah, huh? sometimes they do, but it's, it's sometimes it's not the fault of the film. I, I mean, people that stop me in the store and say, you know, I like you, you know, they also say, and I have very bad direction. So I happen to have fans that don't drive well, but I can't help that. Of course. Yeah. Uh, life Al is... Albert Einstein couldn't drive. That's right. Life, That's is, right. Not, life is not fair. Uh, yeah, and he almost lost the Nobel Prize because the chauffeur didn't pick him up. <laughs> you better get over there. Oh, my goodness, what do I can't drive? <laughs> I didn't know Albert Einstein yeah. didn't drive. He, no, he couldn't drive. He couldn't. Well, I, I guess he walked a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. it would be sad if, if he uh, probably... Played he, the good violin, though. Yeah, he played, he played violin. Well, yes. he played violin while he drove. That was the trouble. That, you see? Yeah. I think that's a five or two um, out here. Yeah. I am excited this evening. You know, the famous school for comedians. I was going to ask you about that. You did a thing on that, um, a film, about yes. ten years ago. Yes, ten years ago. Uh, we're celebrating our tenth anniversary uh, in about... School for Comedians. Yeah, the famous, going? Uh, famous school for comedians. Well, Johnny, we're in 31 countries. Uh, there's, uh, I must tell you right now, Latin America, you can't get in. Really? You can't get in, no. Uh, I, say, I say in the late 80s and in the early 90s, we're going to have people coming... Brilliant comedians from, from Latin America. Brilliant. And, uh, and, uh, People I, always say, where are the yeah. new comedians? 
They're coming from Latin, Latin America. America. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm excited because I own the thing and well. I stand there, you know. Whew. So uh, I'm very excited. Now, we're, uh, we have developed a, a home comedy kit. Those that have it know about it, and those that don't, don't know about it. Uh, For people who want to be professional comedians. Yes. Now, th tonight, I'm introducing this. I have the prototype with me. The kit, what you, what you see would be too expensive to send to you. But impressions are a big part of a comedian's... That's true. What should we call tool chest? Yeah. Okay. Tricks of the trade? Picnic basket. You'll see what I mean. Uh, is it out here? Watch yes, right here. Right. I didn't know what it was. Is that, that <clears> is it? We have seven scientists, three doctors that we've been employing uh, for the last five <laughs> years, and they have come up with a way to let you impre Im 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 impersonate uh, great people. There's a reason why uh, people that are impersonated are great. That's because they're easy to impersonate. That's why they're great. It's like the chicken and the egg. So, um, <laughs> there are certain foods that when they interact with the normal body chemistry, produce the impressions. Well, I'm gonna show you. It's uncanny. I don't do any of this stuff, so I, you know, maybe it won't work, but it probably will. Okay. <clears throat> This will be packaged, Johnny, in something made of plastic. Yeah, this okay. is just a demo. This is a demonstration kit. Yeah, actually. this is a demonstration. We're going to start out. <clears throat> I have different foods. Here's ice cubes. Ed Sullivan, it's labeled. You'll see how that works. All right. <clears throat> so you actually are what you eat then, you know, in a way, huh? For only a few seconds. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't think you want to be these guys forever. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's start out with Clark Gable. I mean, he's a favorite. Clark Gable, you take a lemon. And of course, you'll get this in the kit, it'll be freeze dried. You let it defrost for one day. I've chosen a fresh lemon because it's a prototype. This is a little green, so it's going to be bitter. Right. That's for Gable in his 30s, when he was 30 to 35. Older Gable, older lemon. Of course. Okay? <laughs> Watch now carefully. All right. Yeah. Frankly, Scarlett, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Frankly, Johnny, I don't care if the whole city burns. <laughs> it's the lemons. Just the lemons. Just yeah. hangs on just for a... That's right. Now we have to... I haven't come up with what to wash your mouth out with. Right. <laughs> I figured Lavoris is in the business. They ought to figure it out. <laughs> All right, now. This is a favorite of mine. I love this one. <clears throat> Burt Lancaster. Such a great, great star. And <clears throat> an impression that always works. And previous till now, hard to do. <laughs> a hot, a hot, a hot potato. potato. Hot potato. Good heavens. Bert Lancaster, you take as hot as you can, as hot as you can stand. <laughs> oh, oh, steam, come on. All right, All right Johnny. Go. Yeah. Just a minute. Okay. You're cutting, All right. You're cutting a small portion That's of right, this very hot potato. A small portion of that. I'm going to cut it into four pieces, Johnny. Right. Well, I, All right. Just in the mouth. Go. Oh. I can see that's that's uh, All right. absolutely yeah. true. What? Now it says it says something else here on the thing. It says Burt Lancaster, and in the same potato package, it says Curly. Curly's a little easier if you once you Curly of the three. Burt Lancaster, yes. You need a little bit of pepper, and pepper's good for everyone. It says Brando, Sullivan, et al. It has them all here. All right. <laughs> curly is you take a little bit of pepper, a little bit of pepper. You know Curly, the great three stooge. Hard to do, not now. I'll take a pepper. <laughs> put, it, put it like that. Okay, now. You begin to make a child's train noise. <laughs> woo! Woo! In with a potato! Woo! I'd pay, I'd pay just for that alone. <laughs> That's worth the whole, my God, and it goes on. Now, <clears throat> what do we have here? Uh, do we have to, uh, tell me because I have to know there's certain take longer than others. Are we gonna take a break soon? Take How much? Break now. Uh, take a break now, all right, because uh, I see you up. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Sylvester uh, Stallone? Yeah, Sylvester Stallone with carrots. <laughs> I just wanted to let. <laughs> 
carrots. Okay, okay. Right. we'll be right back for okay. more of this uh, professional comedy kit. All right, we're back, and we're talking with Albert Brooks. And for those of you at home, those of you at home who've always wanted to be a comedian or an impersonator, here's your chance. Anyone can do it if you have the right to... The right, right props is what it takes. Right. I can see, of course, that this is going through the roof, so I'm not going to give away too many more. But <laughs> <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone's a big favorite. Two of the scientists said, don't, don't put this in the kit because people could die. I don't know. <laughs> I take some chopped carrots. I sound like that guy, Joe Garazzi. You take carrots, Johnny. Okay. <laughs> you take these chopped carrots, and you gotta throw them down, and maybe your children try this. Adults don't. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> the children are tough for these yes. days. Okay. Put it in your throat, and it generally works. You gotta throw it in deep. This is a favorite of mine, Merv Griffin, and we can finally talk about sure. him. He's on at four in the afternoon. <laughs> in some locations. <laughs> French vanilla ice cream, cool to about 31 degrees. Just put it deep in the throat. No. <laughs> I like Merv Griffin's show. It's the only place, it's the only show in America where it's still fashionable to come on and say how wealthy you are. It's a good thing. Merv said, what do you got on you? Come on. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, wonderful. Oh. When you see the fashion show. Oh. Is this the piece de resistance? Well, for this show it is. Johnny, Mr. Ed. And you know something? The talking horse? The talking horse. And we're going to do it exactly like they did it with him. It's incredible. He, he this, I, he I can't believe this. I he couldn't do it. impersonations. You know, every time you see a horse in a parade do a trick, they're heavily... Who's near? <laughs> Horses never sit and wave on the natch. They got a metal bar going through the arm like that. And they have near Mr. Hoist. It's just a thing. <laughs> now, Mr. Ed, Johnny, and the, yeah. he was given horse taffy, which is a big thing. I'm going to use just regular saltwater taffy. And they just made Mr. Ed chew for till about two hours, and then they put him to sleep. But, and in that, they put his dialogue. But he works great at parties. The party's dull. I think I can do Mr. Ed. You can't, just like Johnny said. OK, okay. just chew it up and try to get it out of your mouth. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> I'm happy to see you. In <laughs> you know, darling, what about that horse that was stolen? Makes the head move and everything. Absolutely, I didn't know that. Fantastic comedian's kit. We have to take a break. We'll be back. A worst thing to do this for when you don't want to.